Alright, episode 2. Kraywa Zombie Desuka. We are now introduced to a fucking vampire ninja. That's all I have to say. Let's go! Yo, what's up, guys? The Insane Game Freak, yeah. As I said, episode 2 review of Kraywa Zombie Desuka. Vampire ninjas have been introduced. Um, personally, I like the episode. I don't like the vampire ninja, and I'm going to explain why. Through the, let, let's just get through the basic outline of the episode. The episode kind of starts out where, as the last episode starts out, they actually explain why, like, the, because the way the next episode starts out, it's like no one even realizes that he was dressed in like this transvestite outfit. Apparently, Maso just, so, remember how I told you in the first episode that she, Harna tried to wipe his memory clean, and she took her powers? Well, apparently, Maso Sojo's have the power to wipe memories. So, what he did is that he wiped the memory of everyone around him who saw him in the transvestite outfit and shit, and that's why I don't remember anything, which makes a lot of sense. So, I, I'm glad it wasn't like a bullshit version of it. It wasn't like, oh, well... It wasn't like they just said, you know what, we're going to skip the next episode or not explain. At least they explained this. I'm like, cool. Also, Karna, it, it, this this episode kind of goes more on the introduction of a character and then shows growth on two other characters at the same time, which I thought was kind of cool. Even growth on uh, Aikawa, for that matter. Um, first off, apparently Harna makes um, Aikawa breakfast. Well, not breakfast, but his lunch. Makes his lunch for school and shit. And she's she, she kind of got the whole cute Sundere kind of thing going on where she's like really like, she's blushing like hell when she gives him the lunch. She's like, I didn't make this for you, even though she's obviously holding it for him. Um, and so he goes to school with it. He's never, he never brings his own lunch before. That was the first, I mean, that's the first time anyone's ever made him lunch. And it's fried egg rice, I think. No, it's fried eggs, if I, I remember right. And... Believe it or not, Harnell can cook really fucking well because the fucking thing was delicious. He kind of like spazzed. He was like, Argh. like, and then he had, and then a couple of his classmates tried it. And they spazzed, and it was like, was, she cooks really well. The problem is that's the only thing she can cook. And he was kind of mad because he was like, well, could you at least put normal rice in there? It's like, I don't know how to cook anything else but fried rice, which is why she only put fried rice in his food. So, anyways, he gets home. And she's like, make me some dinner. You, uh, I mean, Hellsight, he calls her you, so I'm going to call her you. You want some, um, wants dinner too. So he, he's like, you know what, fine, I'll fix dinner. He fixes dinner. And he's like, this kind of, it's kind of really chilled and relaxed. And I was like, oh, this is nice. And then he's like, I want some more rice. And she was like, I want some more rice. And put some meat in the rice. It's like, cool, cool. And then you just see this random voice that goes, I want some miso soup. And he's like, sure, sure. He's like, wait, wait a minute. Who the fuck? And this random chick out of nowhere, whose name is Sarah Film, but you just call her Sarah. Sarah. Just like, I want some miso soup. And I'm like, okay. And they're just confused. And he's like, well, could you please tell us who you are? And she's like, miso soup. And I'm like, miso. And he's like, miso soup, son? And he's like, no, no, no. And so anyways, they eat, and you find out her name is Sarah and everything, and pretty much what she is is a ninja, a vampire ninja, and she came there to get help from uh, you, but you writes fucking Aikawa with a message that says, it's like, she's not, she's, she's no one special, send her away, <laughs> just send her away, and she's like, well, who are you, she's like, well, anyways, who is Aikawa to miss you anyway? Because she calls her Hellsack Dono. I'm not sure why. I don't know what the relation is with each other. And it's kind of funny because really what it boils down to is that he's like, well, I'm her guardian. She's like, he's my servant. And he's like, oh, you couldn't call me like big brother. That would have been awesome. He's like, nah, you're servant. And then she's like, well, let me be your servant. And she's like, no, I only need one service. And I was like, well, fine. I'll prove myself to this pathetic, foolish-looking man. And he's like, whoa, what the fuck? You come into my house, eat my food, and you disrespected to the motherfucker. He's like, well, I have no reason to be polite to you, to you pathetic-looking, to a pathetic-looking man like you. And this is the thing I hate about her. Sarah 
has a bitch mentality. And that shit is annoying. Luckily, you and Harna get character development, so I'm not as pissed off with Sarah. But Sarah's a bitch. Like, just, just right out the gate. Just comes up. She comes up the gate kind of neutral. And then she, and within the five minutes of you knowing her as a character, she is a bitch. And also, just to note, she, she, she practices the Sumabashi secret store, sword style. Even though she's a vampire ninja. So she's a vampire ninja that practices the Sumabashi sword style. Secret sword style. Technique. And so pretty much she says she'll prove she's going to beat him. She want, She's going to beat Aikawa to prove that she's a better fitted servant. And he's like, well, I rather would not like to fight a girl. He's like, even though she's not giving him a choice. So they go to somewhere secluded, which for whatever reason is the graveyard again. And obviously, obviously, you doesn't want anything to do with her. She doesn't even give a fuck. And then we get this cool ass fight. And this is what I like about this show. This show kind of like does a good mix of like character development and fights. And I'm like, cool. So we get at least, we get at least, I think we're going to get at least one fight per episode the way it seems like it's going. And what, it's cool because they're like, it's like, it's like, well, I really would not like fight a girl, but you're not going to give me a choice. And besides, you told me to send you away anyway. It's like, so you're not going to give up. It's like, not, not really. I mean, she told me to send you away. And if I'm her servant, I got to do what she asks. Game time. And then you get to see. You get to see how strong she is, and you get to see how badass he is. Because he isn't a bitch. A lot of main characters, surrounded by like three girls, or any type of harem, is usually a bitch. He's not a bitch. And I'll tell you why. They start fighting, right? And she does, and she acts like a ninja on some level. She does fight on her sword, but like she has leaves swirling around her, and the leaves turn into a sword. It's like, whoa, shit's about to go down. And they start fighting, and he's dodging and shit. And then she just like disappears and leaves again. Like, it's not like she fades in through the leaves. It's like she turns into leaves and disappears and shit. Because she's a vampire ninja. Uh, you see the ninja part because of the leaf thing. You see the vampire part later in the fight. But she she gets him one good time and they're just fighting. But he's she, she's kind of like whooping his ass on some level. And it was, it's to the point where he's she's whooping his ass so much that she cuts off one of his arms. Not like the entire arm, but like right here. Just cuts this off. And it flies off in midair, and you're like, you lose. I, I, it's like, this match is mine. And she goes over there and attacks him. And he smiles, and he runs at the sword because he's a zombie. And she knows, and she realizes that he's a zombie before the fight even starts. But I was like, damn. She's perceptive. Nice. Anyways, he runs at the sword. He, he intentionally gets stabbed. So he grabs the sword. He's like, 200%. Now you can't use your Sumabashi style anymore. And she's like, shit, because he's stronger than her because it's zombie strength, badass strength shit going on. While Harna's there the entire time just watching. Talking about she wouldn't help him and he didn't want her help anyway. So it wasn't that. It was kind of funny. And she's like, all right. And he's like, all right, 250% though. And she hits him in the head. And she like head bops her. I thought that shit was funny. So pretty much at this point, she gets her sword out, but she gets knocked in the head. She and then the fucking vampire wings come out, and she does kind of—I forgot what the technique's called—but it's like literally, she just does a whole bunch of red blade slashes at him, and she's like, "Ha, ah, what?" And then all of a sudden, he's like, "No, you haven't." And he took the hand that she cut off and threw it at her, <laughs> and it hit her in the stomach, and she fell. I'm like the sneaky motherfucker. Taking the cap taking cut up body limbs and attacking women with them. So he, he, it's like I'm gonna call that the zombie extended punch. It's like he's like he throws his arm and it hits her in the stomach and she falls. And as she falls, she throws a shuriken at his forehead. But all things considered, he wins. And he's like, fine, since I, since you won, you you've earned the right to be her servant. I will leave. And she leaves. And he's like, cool, even though he has a shuriken stuck in his forehead. And the shuriken's still stuck in his forehead, so when he gets back, and she's still there. She's still fucking there. Sarah goes back to his house. And it's like, wait a minute, didn't you just say it's on your prize as a ninja vampire to to honor the agreements? Like, yeah, but it's also in the ninja vampire's moral code to never get the fuck up. And I'm like, 
what was the point of us fighting? <laughs> it was like, it was one of those moments. It's like, what was the point of you fighting then? Did you expect to win? I'm assuming because the, like, nothing changed. And then pretty much from that point on, for whatever reason, she just calls him a piece of shit all the fucking time. It's like every scene she's in with him, she calls him a piece of shit. And it's kind of annoying. So she's there. He goes back to his room. He's laying down. He's relaxing. He's like, nah, I got three girls. and I got fucking three girls in the house. But for whatever reason, he doesn't seem like all depressed about it. He's more like, well, at least I'll never get bored. He's, he's kind of fairly optimistic for something. For, for, unlike a lot of other characters. A lot of other characters think this is stressful shit. He's kind of like slightly optimistic about it. And she has decided to go into his fucking floor. Not floor, but like his roof attic kind of deal opened up a village that above his room and going, hey, piece of shit. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's like, you seems kind of weird. And it's like, do you, it's like, it's like you, you, it's like you seems to be hiding her feelings. And he's like, uh, you sure? That's, I mean, that's just the way she is. And he's like, listen, I'm a girl, so I understand girls way more than you do, than some filthy piece of shit would. Like, literally, she calls him a piece of shit almost in every fucking sentence. It's kind of annoying. This is why I hate her. She's, like, you, she's such a bitch, and she's not contributing and shit. But anyway, she, she, she's like, she, she's like, you might need to, it's like, maybe we need to see something about her emotions and shit, like how you's feeling. And this is where you get more of a backstory on you and where she came to be. Not like a full backstory, but kind of a full backstory from at least his perspective of you. And it's kind of interesting. Pretty much what happens is that, um, she, he's walking around one night, he's going to the convenience store, and she, for whatever reason, she's just sitting there next to the uh, door of a convenience store. No idea, like in the middle of the evening. He walks over, and she's like, damn, she's cute. He walks over and goes, do you like UFOs? And she's like, no. It's like, oh, my one-shot plan to get her to like me has failed. What should I do now? It's like, break dance. No, no, that's stupid. That's stupid. I'm not going to break dance. They fucking break dances. It's funny as shit. He fucking break dances and hurts his wrist and falls over. He's like, ah! And then the girl walks and then, then you comes over and she's like, what are you doing? And it's like, it's like, who are you? Because she was curious. Cause she, he, was, he was literally break dancing. It was actually kind of funny to watch. I personally liked it. And fucking... He's like, he's like, well, who do I look like to you? And she actually look, she takes the time. She goes like this and like this and like this and just to look at him. And then she writes down, she writes, suspicious looking idiot. And he just starts laughing. He's like, yeah, I guess I'm a suspicious looking idiot. And they start developing like a bonding. And they literally, she never talks. So the talking thing was before, was apparently before she met her. The non-talking thing with her was probably before she met him. Because when she first met her, she, she didn't talk then either. We haven't heard a voice. The only time you hear a voice, supposed voice, is through his little flash, his little fantasizing moments he has about her calling him like big brother and master and shit because he finds her cute. Um, So pretty much they have like this long-winded conversation. Everything's kind of cool and shit. And then he leaves. And she even writes on a little notepad, take care. And he's all happy because he talked to a girl. And then we get to how he died. Pretty much what it was is that he, he had heard the news about the serial killer he was walking in the area, heard someone scream, help me, and heard, like, saw blood on the wall. He's like, and he goes into a random house, I guess, that was the one that was the serial killer was in. He's walking around, and he, for whatever reason, he steps, and he freezes, and he gets stabbed, and that's how he dies. Um, then he wakes up with, then he sees, like, words, like, well, I guess, the, and on the screen, you see words that say, don't die. And he wakes up, and... She's right there, and she she explains the situation to him through notes, obviously. And she's like, "I'll stay with you," and that's why you was in his house, pretty much. Like it's like it's going back and re like animating and re explaining what the fuck actually happened. That's and so you get a little insight on her character. And personally, to me, I like her now more because of that little backstory. Because you could tell she wasn't a bad person. She seems kind of selfish on some level, but. Just I don't know the way she came off in the first episode, but this this kind of made me not hate her as much. The same thing with Harna, because Harna comes off as an annoying bitch, and then she's making like food for him and shit, and she's she's fairly nice to him, you know. But the thing is, is that she she says a whole bunch of mean shit, and this kind of leads to her slight character development. 
where it's the next day, and I guess it's like the weekend and shit, so he's not at school and they're just eating. And fucking, she's like, they're talking. I guess they're having their normal conversation and shit. And he's talking about, well, could you make like some other stuff for like lunch and shit instead of the fried eggs? He's like, well, that's all I can make. Can you put white rice in there? He's like, no. You put rice in there, you fucking idiot. Go die. And he's like, yeah, you are a piece of shit. Because Sarah never calls him anything else. It's like everything is like everything after that fight. He's just like, piece of shit. She's just like, piece of shit, piece of shit, piece of shit. I'm like, you bitch. God, I hate you. Like, I hope she gets scared of him in the next episode. Because this shit, she, that shit just blatantly annoys me. You call someone a piece of shit. She's not contributing at all to the house. And she's supposed to be his servant. That's the funny thing. Because when she lost the battle, she, the only reason why she, the only way she figured she could stay is becoming his servant. And then she treats him like shit. And doesn't want to abide by any of his rules. Which makes it even more fucking annoying. But, anyway, she keeps saying go die. And you gets kind of pissed and writes down. You shouldn't use those words so freely. And she and uh, Akai Kawa's like, no, that's cool, you. She's just playing. She always says, go die. And she, like, pats her head. And she's like, don't touch me. Go die, die, die. And you was like, bitch slap. <laughs> and bitch slap the shit out of her. And said, death is painful. So, to me, you, honestly, her, the, the slight, her asking him to make her food all the time. And all this shit, which is the only thing she really does to bug him is just to be like, make me food. Not that bad. I don't mind her. She 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 became a, a I like her more through this episode. Harna got the message and offered her some of her delicious fried egg rice, I think is what it or it's just fried egg. Which is the only thing she can make effectively. And it was cool. And you got a little bit more insight on Yu's character, and the episode kind of ends on that note where Harna just kind of chills and fucking you, you was kind of being, you can kind of see the emotion in her face and he walks over and try to console her. He's like, you're all right. And she's like, and then Sarah out of nowhere is like, make me use a soup, you piece of shit. And it's just like, just ruin every fucking thing. And she does. She ruins fucking everything and it pisses me off. And that's how the episode ends. For a second episode, I really liked it because you got care development for Harna who I think is going to become a slightly better person, or at least stop saying die, telling him to die all the time. And you just became, like, my favorite female character in the show. Like, point blank. She was probably going to be, while I was waiting on the Vampire Ninja, unfortunately, the Vampire Ninja fighting style is somewhat of a badass, but, like, fucking attitude is a bitch. It's like she only felt the need to be polite because she was in someone else's house. Even though she's asking him for food. And for what, and he's kind of chill with it. That's why I'm not really pissed off that he's kind of taking orders from like three girls. Because the first one she owes. He owes. Hard enough, he kind of owes because he, he, he accidentally took her powers. So I wasn't, I don't have an issue with hard enough or you asking him for food and shit. Or them being like slightly bratty. Sarah is just a bitch. Point the fuck blank. Do not like Sarah right now. Like Vampire Ninjas. Think the shit's cool. Also, she did just to notice she's probably going to be the fan service main character of this because she has like the biggest breasts in the fucking series right now. I think there's probably gonna, I think there's another girl that shows up from the credits I saw, but I'm not 100% sure. Also noting, another cool thing about this series, the opening theme is catchy as shit. The, the ending theme is like video game music related. It sounds like video game music kind of. It's kind of like Scott Pilgrim's soundtrack in that sense. And I like that shit. That shit is fucking awesome with me. But, good second episode. I like it. I still, uh, the link to watch it on Crunchyroll will be in the description. Fucking cool episode. Don't like Sarah. Right now, Sarah's a bitch. Like, I'm assuming third episode she'll get more character development. I like you more and I like her hard enough more. But fuck Sarah. Sarah can go eat a dick right now. Right now. I say right now because she may change. Hopefully she changes. I can't. She's it's like she's cool fight style and badass. Even though she's very obsessed with the Timabashi style of swordplay. That piece of shit thing has got to stop. And even if it doesn't stop, she has to have some redeeming factor in her character. Because right now, she's fucking annoying. And I hope we get a little bit more background on Harna this time. Because... All we know is that she's a muscle show, Joe.
That's about it. And they, they're fighting these things called Megalos. That's it. So, this is my review. This has been going on for like 20 minutes. I will talk to you guys later. Life a gameplay to win. I love zombies. And I will catch you guys later. Link to the episode is in the description. Peace. Don't be a zombie. And if you do, be a badass one. Just saying.